Hello friends, a warm welcome from Aussies Group. My name is Malcolm and I'm your PT coach. It feels good to be back on the live session today and as many of you would know, I take a live session every Friday from our Melbourne CBD office. So here I am and yes, today's live session is mainly meant to make everyone aware like I've seen many, you know, many comments at many places on many forums that in the month of June, the results have started, you know, declining a bit, the success ratio and something like that, so on and so forth. But nothing like that. Like still many people are getting eight each. And just today itself, one of my students got 90 as well. So it's nothing like that and no need to worry at all. So I would just say, don't listen to naysayers. I mean, don't listen to rumors about a lot of things and just focus on the main techniques, just focus on the major tasks. Yes, I'm not saying that, you know, low weight tasks are not important, but always focus on the main task because obviously it's an algorithm, it's a software, and PT always lays emphasis on certain more important tasks more. So definitely you need to focus, you need to be on the right track. Well, also, um, most of the people I know who don't get their desired score of eight each. Well, generally I've seen that they make mistakes in few of the main tasks. And again and again, I'm saying the word main tasks, main tasks, main tasks. So now coming straight to the point, which are the main tasks where we cannot afford to make mistakes? So one of the major areas where people need to work on is read aloud. That is the first task in speaking because I've seen many times people are really fast in read aloud and they just speak like a bullet train or like a machine gun. They just keep on speaking, speaking, speaking without realizing that like if you don't take the right pauses, then obviously the score is going to be finished. So don't take read aloud lightly and always try to take the right pauses because after every few years, the software expects a pause. That is the first thing. Second, very, very important task is repeat sentence. In repeat sentence, I've seen so many students struggle, unfortunately, even my own students, many of them struggle. Well, this task of repeat sentence will not develop overnight. It requires consistent practice, consistent efforts. Like if you think that overnight you're gonna be an expert at repeat sentence and a miracle is going to happen, no, it's not like that. It takes time and many people are not ready to invest time and then they expect miracles, so it doesn't work like that. So nothing in life works like that. If you're good, yes, it will work for you, but if you're not that good, then you need some time. Well, I've got a question from Kunal. Sir, are you giving online coaching? So thanks for asking the question, Kunal, but unfortunately, no, I'm not taking online coaching classes at the moment. In the future, if and when I start the classes, you'll definitely find out but I'm sorry at the moment there are no online classes which I take. But you can definitely follow the online coaching sessions taken by the other tutors on PT tutorials. Even they are very good teachers, they're very good tutors as well. They have got a good knowledge of the subject and definitely they should be helpful in getting you your desired score. Thank you. Well, the other very important thing is that one of the tasks which is generally neglected by most of the test takers, unfortunately is answer short questions. Answer short questions is the last task in the speaking module and generally you get around 10 questions for answer short questions. Now PT guideline says that for a right answer you get one point and for a wrong answer you get zero. Yes that's right but the thing is that if you give more than a certain number of wrong answers the listening score is going to go down very quickly because this task is integrated. So please be a bit careful with answer short questions because that task is super important for the listening score. And if you take it lightly, the test is gonna take you lightly. So just be a bit careful with answer short questions. Well, Edeni G has a question. Please best pace for speaking and how to improve fluency. Well, the best pace for speaking is the pace at which the software easily understands you. Like, you know, there's no fixed pace for everyone, but generally what I recommend to everyone, and the same I'll recommend to you as well, try not to be too slow. And as I already mentioned to you, even in the Telegram group, 
please don't stress on the words which you speak because the more and more you keep on stressing the more and more the fluency might keep on deteriorating because the software doesn't expect us to stress at each and every word i know sometimes it's natural it comes from within but try to i mean you know control your urge to stress on words and just keep on speaking in a monotonous pitch again i'm saying don't be too slow don't be too fast just keep on speaking non stop and try not to you know take unnecessary pauses like um uh, um don't do that just try to be as fluent as you can be and try to listen to how native speakers speak native speakers are people from australia america so they are pretty fluent like people from britain so they don't take unnecessary pauses generally and try to speak continuously and i think that will work for you Well, I've got a question from Naga Sairam. Can we use backspace any number of times? You can use backspace because even in the video which I had made one year back, I very clearly said that even if you use backspace one hundred times in the exam, it will not impact your writing score. Okay, it will not. So you can use backspace. It's not going to impact your writing score. So yes, you can. That's answer to your question. Well, coming to the other thing. one of the major main tasks where people make a lot of mistakes is summarize spoken text and if the listening and writing score is a low score i mean it's lower than what you have imagined then definitely you need to introspect you need to find out what went wrong in summarize spoken text because the thing is that pt is very careful with the spelling with the grammar in this task and even if you're going to make a single mistake of spelling and grammar then it's going to be a big big issue and there's going to be huge penalty on the score so just be a bit careful with summarize spoken text <clears throat> well i've got a comment from sardar inderdeep singh and he is asking that listening is 77 everything else is more than 90 so as i already mentioned sardar inderdeep singh if your listening score is not 79 plus very high chances you are making mistakes in summarize spoken text the other issue could be answer short question the other issue could also be retell lecture because maybe if you are following a template in retell lecture maybe that's not helping you much so that could be one of the reasons because i've seen many times people who get scores like you have been getting pretty high scores and everything else but listening is a bit low it generally answer short questions summarize spoken text and retell lecture because from the looks of it it seems as if you are pretty accurate in write from dictation because you got once you got 90 in writing the second time you go you've got 84 in writing so i think your write from dictations are okay your problem seems to be with summarize spoken text so just be a bit careful with summarize spoken text Well I've got one more comment from Chahal Kamal and the question is can you give one example for read aloud I don't have anything in front of me right now but yeah generally the speed for speaking should be this speed at which I am speaking right now it is very clear to understand the words which I am speaking and I'm not stressing on the words my voice is very clear it's very flat and I'm not stressing on even a single word I'm speaking and if you speak like this in the real exam chances are very high you will get a full score in speaking and reading and also you can see that my voice is very steady right now right there is no intonation at all but if i speak like this you know if i keep on stressing on the words then definitely the score is going to go down so try to keep your voice steady and flat don't be too slow don't be too fast and just keep a you know steady pace like this Well thank you for the comment Sardar Inderdeep Singh glad you got the answer and you have written that you never use a template for summarize spoken text i agree with you but i was talking about retell lecture because many times people do use a template for retell lecture and sometimes it's not that helpful because if you don't speak in a certain way that the listening score always remains down so even in summarize spoken text maybe you are making some small grammatical mistake because sometimes you know it's very you know minor mistakes which make a huge impact on the score and that is what is happening with you as well that's my hunch so just have a look on those two tasks thank you <clears throat> well i've got a comment from rahul sukumar
Um, you're talking about summarized written text. Well, the last part of the sentence starts with and so and should I use in conclusion? You can use and so, you can use and conclusion. Both are correct in summarized written text. But just put a comma because the whole game of grammar depends on commas. If you put the right comma at the right place, you get a good score. If you don't put the correct comma at the correct place, unfortunately, the score will not be that good. So you can use what you're using, but just write and in conclusion. You cannot just write in conclusion. You need the word and before that. Okay. And before the and, you need a comma. Hope that helps. Thank you. Well, um, I've got a comment from Kunal as well. In Describe Image, someone told me that you can keep on speaking anything if you don't get the content. Is it true? Well, yes, it is partly true because content is not that important. Um, I mean, honestly, it's not that important. It is important, but not that important because the main thing with the software cares about is oral fluency. So if the fluency is good, then generally the score is also pretty good. Sonia, can we check the quality of the video once? If you can just check it. So don't worry much about the content, but focus mainly, as I'm saying, on fluency. Because if you keep on uh, speaking in a very fluent pace, a fluent pace, then generally, even if the content is, uh, your word is true, actually, <laughs> content is not that important. Don't worry about it so much. Just fluency and take the correct pauses. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Well, Sardar Indradeep Singh, I think if you have any other comment, you can just post it. I'll be more than happy to answer it as well. Now, coming to the other very important task, and obviously that is listening, fill in the blanks. Because in listening, fill in the blanks, uh, it's an integrated task again. You get marks for listening and writing. And depending on a bit on, of luck, if the words which you get in the listening blanks are not that easy, then it's going to be a bit tricky in the real exam. So in listening, fill in the blanks, I always suggest to everybody that if you're not sure about the words, it's better to leave that blank. Yes, it's going to be counterproductive. If you're not sure about the spelling, best solution, just leave it. Don't take an unnecessary chance because if you write the wrong spelling, the score goes down much more than leaving it. And that's why I always say that if you're not sure, better leave the blank in listening fill-ups because sometimes you get slightly tricky words. For example, there's a question in the real exam and one or two words which come in that blank are words like pseudo latin so you know when you hear it for the first time it's really difficult to catch sometimes the word is pseudo latin and the spelling of pseudo latin is going to be like p s e u d o dash l a t i n and the l will be a capital l so you do get such words in the real exam this question which comes it's a passage on harry potter the book and you've got words like spells and charms in this passage in the real exam and one of the words is neo-latin that's n-e-o dash l-a-t-i-n and the other word is pseudo-latin so if you don't know the spelling best bet is don't write that word because otherwise it's going to be a big problem in the real exam well i've got one more comment from again from edani g adiola for retail lecture, can I write out the keywords not in phrases and just read out as it's written? Well, you can, but if you don't take the pauses, then again, it's going to be a problem. So reading out just the keywords might not be enough. You need to give some structure to the keywords. Just if you read the keywords, you know, for example, Australia, 1912, Martin Jr. King, King Long, Malcolm, Aussies, New York. No, it's not going to work like that. You just need to speak in a certain way. And unfortunately, if you just read out the words, it's going to be a bit of a problem. So some structure is required for a good score. But other than that, yes, definitely you can note down the words. There's no need to note down the phrases. But when it comes to reading, you just need the correct way to read it out. Well, you have asked another question that for SWT, pick up three independent sentences and join with fanboys. Please advise on how best to go. Yeah, you can do that. But just use the proper punctuation marks before and after the conjunctions or the connectors which you use. Because if you don't put a comma at the right place or if you put a comma at the wrong place, then it's going to be a bit of a problem. So just be a bit careful with the comma. Comma plays a major role in writing and even in the listening and reading scores. Because one wrong comma means the meaning can change. So just be a bit careful about that. Well, Jaydeep has a question. 
Hi Malcolm, how can I improve myself in particular a described image? Well, hi Jaydeep, thanks for asking. Good to see you over here. Well, uh, for describe image, you just need to speak fluently. Content takes the back seat. Fluency is the main thing with the software cares about. And don't stress much about content as I'm saying. Just try to keep a you know monotonous way of speaking. Even if you use a template, it's okay. But I always suggest that you should know the right way of using a template. Because if you just keep on speaking really fast, I mean, if you don't take the correct pauses, which unfortunately many people don't take, so the score goes down. So it's not only about speed, it's not only, only about speaking, it's about speaking in the right way. So don't, I mean, just take any image in front of you. For example, let's say you have this phone in front of you, you can just say, in front of me is the phone, the phone is black in color, the phone has an outline, I can also see my finger, my finger is brownish, creamish in color, I've got a nail on the finger, the screen of the phone is black. I've also got a camera. There are two back cameras on the phone as well. I've also seen a watch in the picture. In conclusion, the image is a beautiful image. Something like this, you know. It's mainly about the way you speak. And after every sentence, you need to take a pause. If you don't pause, if you don't take the correct pauses, the score goes up. I mean, the score goes down. Because many times people say like this, in front of me is an image, let me have a closer look on looking closely. I can see various trends are emerging on the screen. I can see 30, 30 is my father's birthday. So if you keep on speaking really fast, then the score goes down. So try to control the speed and try to take the right pauses. All right, I think that's more than enough. And just be mentally prepared. And in the first 25 or 30 seconds before the, I'm sorry, in the first 25 seconds before the beep, um, just try to speak what you're gonna speak after the beep. So basically just rehearse in the first 25 seconds, you know, just see the numbers, start speaking the numbers. On the screen, I can see 30, on the screen, I can see 55. Just start speaking because the warm up will be very helpful. So that's how maybe you can definitely improve and describe image. Well, coming to the other very important task where people, I mean, take that task very lightly and that's highlight incorrect words. Highlight incorrect words is a very, very important task. And if you're not serious about highlighting incorrect words, again, is gonna be a big, big problem in the exam. Generally, it is an easy task, but it depends a bit on luck and we never know how lucky or unlucky we are going to be in the test. So sometimes the audio is really fast and uh, it's, it has a lot of disturbance in the background. Also, sometimes there are a lot of human sounds like um, uh, um, uh, a lot of such sounds are there in the audio. And along with being fast, there's also a lot of background you know, disturbance, like music is playing sometimes. Sometimes people are shouting, Some, something is going on in the background. So it's really, it gets really difficult to focus sometimes. So please be a bit careful and take highlight incorrect words a bit seriously. Those of you who are not taking it seriously, because even that's an integrated task with listening and reading. So remember when a task is integrated, two things depend on that task. So need to be a bit more careful with that, obviously. Otherwise the score again will go down. And if there is a lot of disturbance in the background and highlight incorrect words, I would recommend you to lodge a complaint straight away. You can just raise your hand and lodge a complaint that there was a faulty audio, there was a lot of disturbance and some maybe some technical issue as well because sometimes there is some issue. So don't take it lightly, always lodge a complaint. That's the best thing. Lastly, coming to write from dictation, the most important task you can say. It is like the trump card in PTE. It is always the last task for which you get generally three or four or five questions. Minimum should be three as per the PT guideline. Maximum can be five questions for write from dictation. Now, generally people make mistakes and don't even realize that they've made a mistake. So many students, you know, come to me and tell me, 100% I'm right in write from dictation. I'm sure I've made no mistake. And then they themselves come back to me later, maybe, you know, after one day or two days, and then they tell that, oh yes, there was some, there was one, mistake which I made in write from dictation. Now, even if you make a single mistake in write from dictation, boom, the score goes down and it's finished completely. And remember, write from dictation is an integrated task with listening and writing. So obviously both the scores go down. So if you're not sure, then, I mean, please practice the repeated dictations from the June prediction file and also from the May prediction file because few of the questions are different in these two files. And all of these are real test questions. 
So just download the prediction file for the months of May and June. The link is already given in the comments in this video itself and that will be very, very helpful. Um, also, most of the people, not most, but many people make a mistake in using correct articles in right from dictation. Like many times people tell that if you are confused, what should we do? Like in A and or the. So the thing is that if you're not sure, but still you think that the grammar makes sense, then it's better to write that article. For example, student was late for the class. If the sentence is student for late for the class, is it right or is it wrong? Definitely it's wrong. It should be the student was late for the class. It cannot start without the article the. So if it makes grammatical sense, then I would suggest please follow your instinct, follow your grammar instinct and just add that article before the noun or yeah. Because if you don't add it, then again, it's gonna be a big, big problem. So just be very careful about articles. Also be very careful about words ending with ES and ED because even those words are very, very unclear in the real exam and then again, it's a big problem in the score. So these are the few of the main things you need to be very, very careful about. Um, Karthik has a comment. Even a word in WFD will be a problem. Yes, Karthik, the answer is yes. Definitely a word is going to be a big problem because every word should be in the right sequence. And if you miss even a single word, the sequence is incorrect. And that's why it's going to be a big, big problem. And that's why since the day I've been teaching PT and it's been a very long time now, I've been stressing that everybody should focus most on right from dictation. You know, I've know, known so many people who didn't even know that this task was so important. Even like people at other coaching institutes I've met, I've seen, so even they have realized in the last one year that yes, right from dictation is a big game changer. And if you're going to neglect right from dictation, then obviously it's going to be a pathetic score in listening and writing. So you need to be pretty, pretty accurate in right from dictation. It has got the highest weight in all the tasks. Right. Hope I answered your question. Thank you. Well, Devendra has a comment. So Devendra, please write the whole comment so that I can answer your question. Well, <clears throat> Can I know how much penalty for a wrong word? Karthik is asking. Well, it depends. Maybe 10 marks, maybe 15 marks. Depends on the type of mistake you make. But if I were you, I would expect the maximum possible penalty. So mentally be prepared that per mistake, you're going to lose 10 to 15 marks. Yes, you heard it right. 10 to 15 marks per mistake. So that is the type of price you pay for a mistake and write from dictation. So that's why you can't afford to make even a single mistake. Well, Naga Sairam has a question. What is the best way to practice right from dictation? Do I need to mug it up or do I need to repeatedly hear it again and again? Well, that depends on your listening skill, obviously, and your retention skill, your memory power, your typing skills, your noting skills, your concentration. Well, sometimes people are really good. Sometimes people are really good, but a bit unlucky because the question itself is really hard. And yes, questions are repeated in the real exam, but sometimes if you are that unlucky person, maybe the question might not be repeated. So you can't blame luck or anything. Like you just need to listen very carefully as if your life depends on that task. So mentally just be, you know, in a different zone when it comes to write from dictation, you know, because just imagine that it is the last ball of the over and you need a six. Anyhow, you need a six. If you don't hit the six, you lose the game. So just mentally, that should be the level and your mind needs to be relaxed as well you know if you're under pressure then obviously it's going to be a big mess again so yeah you can practice and repeatedly hear the repeated questions again and again because that's obviously one way of remembering the answers because questions are repeated well devendra has a question that singular and plural mistakes affect the score in write from dictation listening or writing does it affect grammar or spelling so obviously it's going to impact everything Whatever you ask is going to impact everything. Grammar, spelling, listening, writing, obviously everything goes down, right? Because let's say the sentence is, the student sits in the lab. And if I write the students sits in the lab, then instead of student, I wrote students. So obviously it's the wrong spelling. It will not match with, with what is in the sentence. 
grammar is definitely wrong because it should have been the student sits in the lab and obviously since there are two i mean there's a major mistake of grammar and spelling listening and writing both go down because that was not the word which was spoken so definitely both the scores go down well karthik has a question that wfd if it's a 12 word long sentence and i missed a word i already told you karthik if even if you miss a single word be prepared to lose around 10 to 15 marks because that is a penalty generally so one word you have to book the test again mentally be prepared all right thanks well sia has a question about summarize the lecture can i use the lecturer said that or explained that or would it be better to synthesize main points and deliver it as a first person both are fine doesn't matter as far as the grammar is correct as far as the spelling are correct and there are no mistakes in typing it doesn't matter you still get a full score because the main thing is content grammar spelling and typing mainly the structure so i don't think it will form any form i mean it will have any uh, type of impact on the score whether you write it in first person or the speaker said that this lecture something blah 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 doesn't matter both are correct all right thank you well antara has a question what should be the correct range of pitch well there is no one correct range of pitch antara it depends from person to person so on the voice which you have or which you possess it depends on that but generally i would recommend don't try to be too shrill don't be too soft just try to speak like you would normally in your day to day life just try to keep your voice a bit normal and a bit relaxed because sometimes like it happens with female test takers and male test takers that if you stress too much the pitch goes too high and then you are out of bounds out of bounds means the software might not be able to understand what you are speaking so try to speak you know at a normal volume don't be too soft or don't be too loud just try to speak normal keep your voice flat don't stress on words too much last thing um re order paragraphs is again a very important task along with the fill in the blanks in the reading section so these tasks also matter a lot for the reading score but like um main mistake areas are what i already said and one last very important thing is the essay now sometimes you get one essay sometimes you get two essays now many times even people who use a template even they make a mistake in the essay so the problem is generally not in the template but maybe it is the way you use the template so just be careful that you know how to use the template because there are a lot of templates available for the essay as well and if you don't use it correctly then the writing score goes down very very quickly that is the main problem with templates they are helpful but they can be equally detrimental to the score so just be a bit careful of how to use a template and many times people ask like what is better if you get one essay or two essays so obviously the answer which most of the people think is one essay but obviously again it's a wrong answer if you want or if you expect a really high score in writing then for that the best is if you get two essays two essays means you get a really good score in writing because writing i mean essay writing is a pure writing task it is not an integrated task so the more you write the higher the score in writing will go so it's always best if you get two essays and just be very careful with the spelling and grammar like many times people forget a single article like a and the and all these small things matter a lot so just be very careful otherwise the writing score might go down very very quickly that's another problem and as all of you can see in the comments section we already got the prediction file for the month of june and hopefully we'll also come up very quickly with the prediction file for the month of july but till then just keep on practicing from the for the from the prediction files for may and june both are pretty helpful and yes we also got our pt writing correction service for corrections of your summaries and essays so it's pretty helpful and pretty accurate and you'll find out the mistakes which you've been making so just focus on these two areas as well well last thing that again i'll just repeat 
in read aloud try not to be too slow or too fast and take the right pauses even in describe image and retell lecture please be a bit careful because i've seen many times people speak non-stop and just don't know where to pause now if you don't take pauses then obviously the software is not going to understand what you're saying so just after i mean speak like a normal person and after every few words just try to take a small pause if you don't pause then don't expect a good score in speaking or reading or listening definitely one of the things is going to go down just be careful let's see as a question how to catch the main points in the lecture especially in the first writing section and length well for the length any length between five words to 75 words is fine as per the pt guideline the answer should be between five to 75 words anything between that is fine but remember it's going to be a single sentence so you will have to join the words or the phrases which you pick up from the passage using link words maybe conjunctions or maybe connectors and you need to be really careful with the punctuation marks in these things how to catch the main points now generally the main points will be maybe a few words which are repeated again and again in the passage or sometimes maybe they are nouns nouns are proper nouns as well like names names of people places and things sometimes they are also important verbs and you should also focus on modals modals are words like must should can could will would all these words are something like an instruction like people must attend malcolm's classes something like an instruction you know so something which is after a model is generally important for content so try to find these words like models conjunctions connectors and just see how things are linked and generally the introduction and the conclusion paragraphs of a passage are very important so try to you know pick up something from the introduction or the conclusion one of those two generally is very important and include it in your answer that's i think a pretty good way to get a good part of the content in your answer as well well uh, i think i've covered most of the important tasks and uh, just be very careful and summarize spoken text because i've been seeing that almost 90 percent of the people and that's a pretty you know big number 90 percent of the people who are not able to get their desired scores in listening or writing it is generally because of summarized spoken text it's a very easy task but i think i don't know why but people are not able to pull through people make very silly mistakes of grammar mainly it's grammar which is killing the score and if you make mistakes of grammar then obviously nobody can save you in pte that's basically the problem with it so please be very very careful with it and uh, just today like as i said one of my students got a perfect 90 well in her last exam her score in speaking was 90 reading was 85 listening and writing both were 69 and after two or three weeks again she took her test um, two days back and she got a perfect 90 19 everything and the only problem was as i already said she was making a mistake with summarized spoken text very very minor mistake you know it's very difficult even to catch such mistakes in the answers but people do make a mistake sometimes and it might be a small comma here and there who knows maybe a small article here and there but that one comma can change the score completely you know sometimes a grammar mistake may cost you 10 or 15 marks and you might not even realize it so in summarized spoken text try to be extra careful otherwise listening and writing definitely is going to go down that's for sure all right and one more thing that as many of you would know and those of you who are in melbourne and who work or live closer to Melbourne CBD, you'll be happy to know that we have, be, we have started our new branch just next to Flinders Street Station. That's an iconic location. So the address for the new branch where I take the classes is 7-9 Elizabeth Street. It's on level one. Um, those of you who come to the city every day might have seen there's a big McDonald's just next to Flinders Station. So our office is just next to McDonald's and it's on level one and i'll share the address as well in the comment section so those of you who are looking to join the classes please feel free and we always get the maximum scores of 90 in melbourne and obviously you know that if you want to go and get 90 then this is the best place so i'm hoping to see you all there very soon well till the next friday i'll take your leave and till then 
keep on practicing all the best my name is malcolm thank you very much have a good day